nose to the ground. And breathe into his nostril what? The breath of life. And man became what? Living soul. So man at this time is what? A living what? Soul. Living? Do you have a question? A living soul? It's true it's made out of the ground. But it's a living what? Soul. And they tell us that we are what? Spirit, soul, and what? Oh, scratch my head on that one. Because yes, he's made out of the ground, but in this instant, he is what? A living soul. You can call it, well, he's made out of Adam, he's made out of dirt, he's made out of the dust of the earth, he's made out of red, Adam means reddish. Okay? But the point is, that he's living because God breathed into his nostrils. Without the breath of breath of life, he would not have been what? A living soul. He would have been just a, a body. <laughs> Can you guys see that, right? So in this instant, he is placed in the garden. A garden that God created, God made, and he put man in it, and then put man in charge of it. How at this time... God is communicating with man. Tell me what it's telling Telepathy. Hmm? She said telepathy. What else? Obviously, he's communicating with God. I can't show you how he's communicating with God. But how is he communicating with God? Aha. Uh -huh. Where is it again? Thoughts. What else? He got telepathy. We got thought. What else? I mean, if we read all the way down... Go to John there from, uh, okay, the verse 8. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he what put the man who had he formed. And by the way, garden of Eden means delight. <laughs> it's a place of delight where God placed man. Okay. Then he said, and out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree. Okay, let's scroll down. Uh, chapter verse uh, 15. 15. And the Lord God took man. And put it in the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou may freely eat. How are they communicating here? See? I can say anything I want, but how truly you see that they are communicating? Is it through the mind? Is it through words? How is they being communicating? It's like they are one, isn't it? Through the breath. Mm -hmm. Could be. You see, we have learned years ago that the breath of life, when you go home and study it, you get to find out that speaks about when God breathed into man, he gave him intellect and inspiration, divine inspiration. So man have an intellect and divine inspiration. You can help break those words apart. Verse 7, break it apart. Look at the breath of life. See what it tells me. So, somehow they are communicating, whether it be by just God being God. <laughs> Could it be possible if I just been in the presence of God, you just need something now? Do you need to have you, you see what I'm saying? To be in the presence of God, could you just only know? What's wrong by only what? Knowing. Knowing. Now he said, And the Lord will command the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of what? Of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that you eatest thereof, thou shalt surely what? Die. So now that that tree, God said, Don't eat of that tree. The day you do, you will what? Die. And we know that when they ate on the tree, they literally did not die. You can take it physically. You can take it even spiritually. Or you can take it even soulish. I don't, don't mind how you take it. The point is that they did not die. How do I know? Because even after that, God continued to communicate with them. True or false? So even the statement that was made that they should only die, what that really means? I know. 
that if we jump ahead to future tense, then we find out, well, you're going to go to hell, you're going to die in hell, you're going to burn forever, da 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 We heard that story before, right? But in this moment, this is the first time that I know in the Bible that the word death comes into place. In Genesis chapter 2, verse what? 16? 17? This is the first place where the word die as a what? As an action of your action. Okay? But even when it happened, it did not happen. Something else happened. And that's where I want to take you. Let's find out, for example, I gotta take you to some words over here. What he said. Uh, verse 8, and the Lord just said, if any, if, if it is not good that man should be alone, right? And then he made woman and so on, and I don't want to get into the woman right now. But let's go into uh, verse 24. Verse 24. I want to take it to this part of it. Because so far, Adam gets sleep. <clears throat> they, oh God, <clears throat> made woman out of him. How are they communicating? They go, tell him, hey, I know you are alone now, so I'm going to make another one out of you, you know. No, what did God do? Did you sleep? Right? God did this sleep. When he wake up, what do you see? A woman. A woman. Oh, my God. And what is saying? That is in 23. And Adam said, this is now one of my bone and flesh of what? My flesh. Okay. So she be called what? Woman. Because she was taken out of a man. man. This was a physical action. Adam, whatever it happened, I don't know how God did it. I just know that the statement, according to what it says there, that she is now what? Flesh of my what? Flesh. But in that instant, they still were, can anybody tell me? In the garden. They still were? In the garden. Flesh of my flesh, right? We could be part of my part. If I look at the word flesh, we're going to a deep study on it that I don't want to get into that one right now. But it also means what? Physical thing. Okay. Then he said, Verse 24. Who wrote this over here? Verse 24. Who wrote that there? <laughs> read it loud. Come on, read it for me. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and be trapped into his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Keep going. And there were both missing. say God, all right? Could it be Moses? <laughs> Let's say God said it, all right? But there shall man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be, what said again? One what? One flesh. There were two, but they come together, they become one. They're going to create oneness. They're going to create one thing. One flesh they become. And they were, the next part I want you to look over here is, they were both, say again, yeah. naked. What naked mean? Close off? Instantly, that's what we perceive. Why? Because we've been told that that's what it means. That if you're naked, they were naked, then we really you know that they made leaves and they cover the private part, right? That's what we read. So therefore, we, in our head, in our natural head, we think that they were what? Naked. But to that word, naked could have a different meaning. Yes. Could that word naked mean something else? Could that word naked could mean that they were Pure. Nothing to cover. They were just pure. I'll show you. Let's look at the word naked. The word naked, the number for that is 6174 in the Hebrew. And when we read it, what does it say? Arom or Arom from 6191.